And there we are. Let me make sure we're on. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Come on in. Tonight, we have the ascending session. As you guys know, this is once a month, my movie ascending session. We're so excited. You know, we always have a special guest. And today, we have the teacher, the teacher, John Marshall. So tune in, tune in, everybody. I'm just giving everybody a moment to kind of log in and let's share. Let's get this out to the people. Today's topic is preparation. Preparation. Did we prepare this year? Are we getting prepared? Um, so whatever um, God has placed on his heart to share with us. So we want to give glory and honor to God today and um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So we thank him, thank um, God for this opportunity to bring forth his word. It is always about him. It's none of it is about us. So I'm going to give um, the teacher, John Marshall, an opportunity to introduce himself. I am John Marshall, and I want to say thanks, Myra. I am excited and honored to be a part of the program tonight, and I applaud you for getting quality information to people every week and every month. And on every opportunity that you have. I tell people I am a farmer by birth. I was born and raised on a farm in West Tennessee. I am a concrete finisher and bricklayer by trade. I just happen to be in life coaching and ministry and real estate. Wow. And I'm loving every minute of it. It is an awesome experience. I have lived in South Carolina for the past three years. Uh, zigzagged across the state for years, done ministry work in Anderson for years, and I'm just excited, excited, excited to be in South Carolina and a part of this program tonight. I'm just real, <laughs> and I have done a number of things. I usually work better from questions. That way I uh, get a chance to get right, right into the area where people want me to be. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate to ask any questions tonight, and I'll be delighted to, to share. So if you guys have any questions, be delighted to share. But as um, God was giving me prep preparation, are we prepared spiritually? Are we prepared mentally? Are we prepared physically, naturally, or prepared for the opportunity? So there's so many preparations that we need to be prepared for. So let's start with the spiritual side. Are we prepared spiritually or what do we need to do to be to be prepared spiritually one of the things that I think it's so important and critical to do is to always have a specific objective I teach in life coaching a concept called goal steps where you decide where is it that I want to ultimately be. Mm -hmm. And then we decide what are the specific steps that lead me to that location. I think far too often people want to go somewhere, mm -hmm. but they have not decided where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Then when they decide where they want to go, they have not discovered exactly how do I get there. Mm -hmm. Then take the how do I get there and then divide and design it up in the specific steps that I need to do each day. Now, when we uh, talk about, now the, the principle is the same regardless. So we, we ask a question, what do I want to accomplish spiritually? Mm -hmm. Suppose a person say, I want to get better control of my temper. Mm -hmm. Then what are the practical steps that get me there? If you're working on your temper, one of the first things that's critical and crucial you need to do is to slow down your response. Mm -hmm. You do not have to respond so quickly. And I tell people, if you find yourself having to apologize the next day, 
Mm-hmm. If you had waited till the next day to respond, mm-hmm. you would not have responded that way. So wow. one of the best steps you need to do is you, you don't have to respond right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a man said to me one time that a man mistreated him. And he thought about it for a couple of days. And then he went and found the man and reminded the man of what he did. Mm-hmm. He said, you deserve a good beating and I'm here to do it. <laughs> he went to the man two days later and gave the man a good behind whipping. But he, he did that after he had decided this is what I should do. So the first thing, so if it's, if, so, so you have to ask yourself, what specifically is my objective? Mm-hmm. The area of spirituality. Is my objective to gain more knowledge? Mm-hmm. Okay, if that's your objective, then you might want to read or you might want to meditate more. You mm-hmm. might want to study more. Sometimes mm-hmm. to read less and study more and meditate more uh, will yield uh, greater dividends than just reading more. Or let's say you want to become a teacher. You want to be able to share with people. Then you look at what are the practical steps that get me there. If you want to retire at 55, what are the practical steps that get right. me there? Mm-hmm. And so that then puts you in the driver's seat to start getting there. So I think sometimes we leave uh, things in the what I would call the general or generic category. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going on vacation. So where are you going on vacation? You got to name, right. name a specific destination. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you aren't ready to go anywhere until you decide what is that specific destination. That's true because whenever you take a vacation, you plan the whole thing out. You know where you're going. You know how much it costs. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you're going to fly or drive, how far it's going to take you to get there, how long how much you have to save for if you have to sacrifice get an extra job you know so you do take those all those planning steps to get to that destination so spiritually yes mentally um go ahead when mental preparations are so crucial when paul writes in ephesians 4 and verse 26 he talks about, uh, he, he has taught the people to take off a pre-converted behavior. Hmm. And then he tells them to put on some things. And I'm sorry, that's Ephesians 4 and verse number 20. Actually starts at verse 20. He says, but you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard of him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which Mm -hmm. is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceits. And then in verse three, he says, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Wow. A mental, spiritual renewal. And so what he has described is we discontinue our pre-converted behavior, Mm -hmm. change our mind by becoming educated with the thoughts of Christ Mm -hmm. so that we can put on a new lifestyle. And then he begins at verse number 24, talking about the new self. And then he starts into some very specific things. He talks about quit lying and stop stealing Uh, Mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things. So mental preparations in my coaching, I do something called persistent mental stamina, which Mm -hmm. is critical and crucial for people who are going to be successful because what I do in persistent mental stamina is I teach people how to say yes to yourself when everybody else has said no. Right. Because if you began to do something, and you know this from experience, if you began to do something that's worthwhile, 
somebody is going to say no. Mm -hmm. Opposition is going to come. So you have to be able to develop the stamina, the mm -hmm. mental stamina, mm -hmm. to keep saying yes to yourself when everyone else said no. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked to a gentleman yesterday who resides in a senior's place in Greenville. He said when he applied there 12 years ago, the uh, whoever was in charge immediately turned him down. Mm -hmm. He said as he was leaving, a group of people who lived there asked him when would he be moving. And he said to them that they turned me down. They said, what? They, they took him upstairs and had a prayer with him. And the next day, the lady called him had his key ready and everything to move in. Now, and he's been there 12 years. He said he would not leave if someone gave him a free place because <laughs> he is convinced that this is the place where he ought to be. Mm -hmm. so what he does is he spends all of his time helping seniors and he do not wow. charge them. As a matter of fact, he doesn't allow them. He told mm -hmm. me about he went and picked up medicine for an older lady, and he's in his 70s himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he said the lady uh, then came back up to his room and offered him money for what he had done, and he wouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. and the lady just broke down and cried, said she never had people to respond to her like that. But persistent mental stamina, what would have happened had he said, they said, I don't qualify, no need of wasting our time, et cetera, et cetera. He would have deprived himself of the 12 years of ministry that he'd taken place in that. Wow. Location. So, There's... go ahead. Uh, mental preparations. Uh, you have to start early. Parents should start their children developing mental toughness. Because if your children develop mental toughness, they won't be followers. They will be leaders. If mm -hmm. they don't have mental toughness, then they surrender to every invite that they receive. Mm -hmm. And they will be invited to do something illegal, end up in prison uh, if that happens. So develop, uh, never tell your children that you can't do stuff. Make them go figure out how to do it and then as they start figuring out how to do it, they may conclude that I need to modify this a little, but you have not discouraged them by telling them they cannot do that. There's um, something that I use and that I teach in my coaching class. It's called the Midwife and Cobra Expedition, taking your power back. You know, there are so many ways you give your power to people um, when they say no. It's like your energy or your power just left you because you're no longer energized with that. Yes, because you've given them that power because and when they said no. Um, so just taking your power back in so many ways, um, for example, for someone to give their power to someone to say, this person tell me I look good. And if that person say you don't look good, you've given them your power when you knew you look good before they say you don't look good. So taking your power back by saying, yes, I know I look good regardless of what you say, you say, or yes, I can do this no matter what you say. So just holding on to the power that you have. And I call it just taking your power back. Do not give your power to anyone, you know? Um, that, so I, that is so crucial. That is so crucial. Very, very helpful. Uh, I, I tell people, don't become frustrated by an erroneous interpretation of you. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you get dressed up, or even if you're not dressed up, if you believe that you look good and someone call you ugly, you just say, praise the Lord, they'll get right. better outside. I, I hope they, they don't have the capacity. And see, you have to realize that there are people who do not have the capacity to interpret you properly. Mm -hmm. And there are people who do not have the capacity to even describe you properly. That's correct. Uh, and so people become very frustrated uh -huh. because 
they are being labeled by someone else and they are mislabeled. You know, my name is John Marshall. If someone called me Robert, they can mispronounce Robert as bad as they want to. I don't become aggravated by that. Uh, if somebody called me short, fat boy, they, they, they're not describing me, even right. if they are looking at me. Uh -huh. they're, me. Uh, they're talking to the imagination of their mind because mm -hmm. I'm not short and I'm not fat. Mm -hmm. But if a person calls me the N-word or call me uh, something, that's not me. Mm -hmm. So I'm agitated. I look around to see who he's talking about. Who they're talking about. <laughs> uh, and so if, if there's no other person, then I conclude that he has a misinterpretation in his mind. And he doesn't need me to knock his eye out. He needs me to pray that his mind will be better adjusted. But he's not talking to me. Right. Um, so when I was looking up preparation and when I was going through scripture, a lot of things just really came to me. Preparation, um, preparing for the opportunity. You, we know that Joseph was prepared for the opportunity when those men was in um, his jail with him and he interpreted their dreams. And he just made sure that he said, re, re, you know, tell him about me when you get out. So he took advantage of that opportunity. He was prepared. Then we know that Nehemiah, he was prepared um, for when the opportunity presented his it to present itself to him when he was told that the walls were torn down and he prayed, he fasted and he cried. He made it personal so that when he was asked, he was prepared for that opportunity. So he knew exactly what he needed, where he needed to be and, and how much he needed. Therefore, the king granted his wish and gave him all the things that he needed along the way. So when the opportunity was presented, he was prepared. So are we prepared for that opportunity? So these are the kind of things that had came to me. Um, Esther, um, there were several things that she had to be prepared for then prepare. Esther um, had to be prepared for the king. She had to be washed properly. She had to be awed properly, and then she had to be dressed properly before she went before the king. After she went before the king and she was chosen, she therefore then had to get herself prepared to go before the king without being called. Um, so are we prepared for the king? Have we been washed properly? Um, have we been awed and anointed properly by God? And are we in our proper clothes? So getting prepared spiritually for um, the king. And then when there's something that we know we need to do, she knew she had to take care of the people. She, she's in the king's house now, but she cannot sit down. She can't sit to the side and do nothing just because she's under the protection of the king. You still have to look out for the people. There are so many people that come in and sit on the bench and do nothing else. You understand what I'm saying? So... She had to prepare. She had to fast and she had to pray before she went into the inner courts in a time that she was not supposed to be there because he did not call her um, in the favor of God to spare the lives of the people. And how many people out here in the world right now needs to get something settled in the court, put on your best dress, go in the time that you're not appointed, but you need to fast and you need to pray first because you know you want to save something, your children's life or something that you need to save, but your court case have not been called yet. Therefore, you need to get to that court. But Absolutely. go ahead anyway. So are we preparing for those opportunities? Are we I'm just sitting on the sidelines and doing nothing. Are we meeting God in the inner courts to plead our case? Um, and then she prepared a banquet for him. So prepare was in um, the fifth chapter of Esther five, um, seven times prepared. So being prepared. Um, and also what came to me with preparation was um, the Passover, this really resonated with me when he said, do not sob the meat. Do not water down the meat. There are so many times that the word gets watered down um, from not using, you know, using these different uh, versions of it. Do not water around, but be prepared by eating uh, with your lawns girded, your shoes on and your staff in your hand. Eating with haste because the Lord, because it is the Lord's Passover. So are we ready? Um 
for the things to come. Are we girded? Do we have our shoes on? Are we eating the word? Eating the word with haste because this is what's going to keep us eating the word. But he said, eat the word with haste with your um, loins girded, your shoes on and the staff in your hand. Eat with haste for it is the Lord's Passover. So he's ready to pass over and kill all the firstborns. And that's where to meet them, what I was receiving, the opportunity lies when all these firstborns die, all of these first businesses, all these first designers, all these first other opportunities. When these first things die, we have an opportunity to take that space. But are we prepared with that opportunity as Nehemiah was prepared, as um, Joseph was prepared? Are we pre prepared mentally, spiritually, physically, and naturally? Absolutely. L let me give you a little concept and then I want to take you into a Bible story and I was, I'm glad you didn't move into the story that I was going to use but here's what we have to do we have to prepare before the presentation is scheduled mm -hmm. often people think when I get the presentation scheduled then I will prepare that's it. Many times your presentation is scheduled because somebody saw you prepared. Mm -hmm. Now, in Second Chronicles chapter six, that will lead us into the story that that I want to go then back into First Chronicles and pick up. Here's what we read in Second Chronicles: uh, King David wanted God to have a permanent house. And he set his heart to build the temple as a permanent house for God. Here's what we read in 2 Chronicles 6 and verse 7. Now it was in, and now this is Solomon speaking. Mm -hmm. It was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said to my father David, because it was in your heart to build a house for my name. You did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build a house, but your son who will be born to you, he shall build the house for my name. So David wanted to build it and he set his heart. Now that's the beginning of preparations. You set your heart. Now, mm -hmm. because he set his heart, he made ample preparations. Now, when we go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 22, 1 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 1, then David said, this is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offerings for Israel. So David gave orders to gather the foreigners who were in the land of Israel. He set stone cutters to hew out stones to build the house of God. David prepared, that's 1 Chronicles 22 and verse three. He prepared large quantities of iron to make the nails for the doors of the gates for the clamps. He prepared the bronze, the, the cedar, uh, he prepared everything. And then in verse five, David said, my son Solomon is young and inexperienced and the house that is to be built for the Lord shall be exceedingly magnificent, famous and glorious throughout all lands. Therefore, now I will make preparation for it. Mm -hmm. So David made ample preparations before his death. Now, there's a ton of, of things in there that are so important. We have to begin learning to think about preparations generationally. Mm -hmm. You got to begin, you, you gotta be, begin to make preparations for things that will not come to fruition until you're gone. Uh, if, mm. if, you plant, if you have to eat the fruit, if you're only focusing on eating the fruit, you will never plant an apple tree at age 90 because you're not going to be around long enough to eat any fruit from there. So we've got to get comfortable preparing in this generation or in this period and handing the project off to someone else. 
we have to begin to make preparations because we realize how large the project is. And we then have to get excited about sharing and inviting others to participate mm -hmm. with them. Now we fast forward to 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse one. Then King David said to the entire assembly, my son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, feel young and inexperienced and the work is great for the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now with all my ability, I have provided for the house of my God, the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, mm -hmm. the wood for the things of wood, the onyx stones, the inlaid stones of atimony, the stones of various colors, and all kinds of precious stones in alabaster in an abundance. Moreover, in my delight in the house of my God, the treasure I have of gold and silver, I give to the house of my God over and over all that I have already provided for the holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold. So Solomon, I'm sorry, David, he prepared everything. He did. All of the materials he so did. that Solomon can build the temple. Uh, so we need visionaries mm -hmm. on the temple so that we can make sure that all the bases are covered. Now, in our generation, when we get ready to make preparations, we can make pretty quick preparations. If you decided if you decided to move to Los Angeles tomorrow, you could go down to U-Haul and rent a U-Haul truck, put, get your debit card, get some people to put your stuff on the truck, and by 12 o'clock tomorrow, you could be headed That's it. to L.A. Mm -hmm. but now, when we go back into Bible days, matter of fact, we could just go back two or 300 years, maybe a little over a hundred years. When a person got ready to take a trip, let's say Abraham, we see the story God called Abraham and we might read that as if Abraham just got up the next day and said, you call me God and send me somewhere I wanna go. Mm -hmm. but the Bible says that Abraham was wealthy. He had cattle. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to take a journey during the days of Abraham, the first thing you have to do if you're going to move cattle, you've got to find grazing ground and water. Mm -hmm. so before Abraham could leave, he had to send somebody out uh, grazing and water. Now, in reality, when God called Abraham, it may have been three or four years or longer before he actually could leave. Mm -hmm. uh, because whenever you took a journey, mm -hmm. you had to make sure that food is going to be, so he had to put together food mm -hmm. uh, to eat on the way. And, and so we can go so quickly now. We get our right. dinner, we can stop at McDonald's, we can get mm -hmm. cooking. But see, back in the day, Abraham couldn't probably couldn't go and spend money. He had to trade some cows for this or some chickens for this. So preparations was engraved in the psyche of their culture. Wow. When I was growing up, I used to watch this and we thought it was funny. My daddy would do this. Older men would do this. If they were going somewhere, if they were taking a trip the next day, mm -hmm. they would check the oil in their vehicle. Yes, they did. They would fill their gas tank up with gasoline. Mm -hmm. Uh Matter of fact, a week or two early, uh, in, in some places it was a little dangerous to go. They made sure they had their weapons. Mm -hmm. All of those kinds of things. Now, I'll get in my truck and head to Tennessee with no money in my pocket, expecting to use my debit card at the gasoline station. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, a few months back when we had the little temporary gas shortage, it reminded me of I was living in Mobile, Alabama when Katrina came through. And we were short of gas. So I put uh, 
five gallons of gasoline on the back of my truck. I still have it back there because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you better be prepared. But we are in such a hurry. We are in such a custom to being able to prepare so quickly. So mm-hmm. we don't think long term like people mm-hmm. back then had to. And That's when you think about our culture of people, they couldn't stop anywhere and eat. They couldn't even stop anywhere and buy gasoline. There was just a few places. So they had to prepare much more strategically. So what David does here is he gives us a great lesson on making preparations. And here's a couple of other things that comes out of that. Uh, And and I'd say to people, what my heart decides, and this is the first stage of preparation, you got to make a decision. Got to make a decision. So what my heart decides, my mind designs. Wow. I have not made preparation because I really haven't decided to go. Mm. So what my heart decides, my mind designs. Now, God has so created us in such a way that whatever it is we don't want to do in the first place, (laughs) our mind finds reasons not to do that. For example, Mm -hmm. you may have had this experience. Uh, And those who are listening, if you have children, you may have had this experience. If you said to your child, said, listen, put your shoes on. We are going out to do some work. And the child cannot find those shoes. (laughs) You can say to the child, okay, we're not going to do any work today. We're going to get some ice cream, but you got to have your shoes. Right. The child has walked past and have seen those shoes, but didn't see them. Uh Uh-huh. Because their mind did not want to see them. Uh huh. <laughs> well, their mind wants to see them, and they see those shoes and they find them quickly. So, what my mind, my heart rather decides, yes, mind designs. I like it's that. Amazing what will happen once our heart actually mm-hmm. decides. So, I say to people, uh, I, I meet people who say, I, I don't have a job, I, I don't know what to do. You you really haven't decided to get a job. Wow. Here's a little story I tell people. My baby son, uh, his his senior year in high school after he graduated, he went and worked at a grocery store before he went to college. Well, he came home his freshman year. He was too uppity to go work in a grocery store. He didn't want to do that. (laughs) So he he said he couldn't find a job. And I had given him a car. And he, his buddy that lived across the street, they, they couldn't find a job. So I said to him, okay, you can use the car between 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock. You can only drive the car if you're looking for a job. Mm-hmm. And there are nobody hiring at night, so there is no reason for you to be mm-hmm. driving the car at night. Mm-hmm. So I said to him, at 4 o'clock every day, Mm-hmm. I want you to put the key on the dresser. Mm-hmm. The next day, he showed up at home. He had two jobs. <laughs> he, he had not decided anything. Right. Wow. I've got, I've got gasoline. I'm, 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 a, I'm a college guy. The very next day, he had two jobs. He and his buddy both had two jobs the very next day. So what my heart decides, Mm -hmm. my mind designed. So when your mind has not designed it, Mm -hmm. it is usually because your heart hasn't decided. Not decided. Wow, I like that. That's good. Going around in circles saying, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. You really haven't decided Decided. to do it. That's good. Once you decide how to do it. Once you decide how to do it. So I say to people, when my heart decides... Uh, my mind designs. Mm-hmm. When my heart decides, my mind designs. designs. So if my mind has not designed, it is because my heart has not, it's decided. not decided. That's why he keeps saying, make a decision. Just make a decision. So crucial. So crucial. Uh, in, in my coaching, when I talk about goal steps, I say to people, decide what the next step is. You don't have to see all the steps. Mm -hmm. You need to see the next step, the next step, and then take it. Mm -hmm. 
see it, and then take it. So when my heart decides the what to do, my mind designs the how to do it. I like that. I'm deciding the how to do it until I decide what to do. So people haven't decided what to do. They haven't designed how to do it. And that's because they haven't decided with their heart what to do. I like and when my heart decides the destination, my mind designs the transportation. Wow. Okay. So when I decide where I'm going mm -hmm. at heart, at heart, mind start designing how to get there. And what is so amazing, when you make when you decide at heart to mm -hmm. do that. It is your subconsciousness goes to work. work it does. Even while you are sleeping at night, yep. Yep. your subconsciousness is preparing how to do it. That's it why you wake up in the morning and they got it figured out. Because once your heart decided, your mind went to work even while you were asleep. And you might wake up at 3 30 or 4 30, jump mm -hmm. up in the bed, excited, enthusiastic, mm -hmm. you have figured out how. To do that. So deciding. Now let me stop and take questions. We may have some questions from the audience. I don't yes. Know. Do you guys have any questions? Um, I just see what they, they like what you said when my heart decides, um, my mind designs. Um, so I do have we do have um some claps on that. Um, when my heart decides, they they really like that. Um, is she put when my heart decides my destination my mind des designs my transportation not sure if that is right this is good that's what we have so far any questions or comments you guys that um you want to put in the chat box please put it in the chat box i am watching to see um if anybody have any questions the last thing that i did write in my notes can you function without your leader are the people or anybody prepared to function without their leader and you even spoke on a little bit when you talked about how david prepared um, Moses, I remember you talking about this in one of your teachings about Moses and how he prayed to see to go to the promised land. But the God said, No, just stand here and look, but go and pray, um, and charge Joshua mm -hmm. to take the people. Have we prepared someone to charge them to take? To, like you said, that visionary to take over and take the people to the next or go to the next. So charging someone over the vision, we lack training and developing or charging people over the project or over the, the ministry or over the job or what, what have you. So charging somebody, are they prepared to take the charge? Absolutely. You, you don't want to turn something over to a person that's not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And you, you need to be preparing people. But then in the preparation, you cannot be fearful of people who become smarter than you. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I tell people, I'm not trying, and, and this was true of my children, I'm not trying to teach you to be like me I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to propel you to be better than me. Mm -hmm. uh, my baby son is a math professor at Georgia State University. Okay. I taught him math in the, well, arithmetic. I taught that to him, but he's far beyond me. Mm -hmm. now, I, I'm not jealous by that. Matter of fact, I get great joy bragging on him. Now, if I had limited him to mm -hmm. me, he would never be able to teach math, not at that level, because he knows math I, I don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. so we, we have to prepare people well enough so that you can trust the vision. Mm -hmm. so we have to be prepared. Now, unfortunately, many people want to be promoted before they are prepared. Mm -hmm. And their mindset is, Promote me, I will prepare. Mm -hmm. See, there is an employee and an employer mindset that operates mm -hmm. in the universe, mm -hmm. and it is different. The mm -hmm. employer is trying to figure out how to get more work out of you for less money. Mm -hmm. The employee 
is trying to figure out how to get more money out of you for less work. Mm -hmm. the price. So one of the best things that can help people is to become an employer in some category. Mm -hmm. if you all of your life with the employee mindset, you will never maximize your potential. Mm -hmm. But you need to be an employer in some category so you can begin to think differently. And employees think differently than employers. Uh, employee just wants to extract more. The employer realized that if we don't produce more, then none of us can extract more. Mm -hmm. so it, it's a little, it's different there. So in preparing people, are you familiar with the Les Brown story? You know who Les Brown is? I know Les Brown, but what's the story? Les Brown uh, wanted to be a disc jockey. And he tells this story. I went to see him in Atlanta once. He said he started practicing mm -hmm. this jockey. He started practicing how to put the records on, how to talk that noise and all of that, and said he practiced and his, he read every book he could find about how to be a successful disc jockey. And his family members laughed at him and said, oh, you're never going to never gonna, never gonna do that. Mm -hmm. But he, he was fully prepared. He went to a radio station, and this takes us back to what I said earlier, persistent mental stamina. He said he walked into the radio station. He said, hi, my name is Les Brown. Uh, I'm wondering if you might need a disc jockey. And the radio station manager said, no, don't, don't need anybody. He said he came right back the next day. He walked in, introduced himself. Hi, my name is Les Brown. Uh, I'm uh, wondering if you might need a disc jockey. The man said, no, don't, don't need a disc jockey. <laughs> Les Brown went back the third day. And the, introduced himself. The man said, weren't you in here yesterday? <laughs> he said, didn't I tell you I didn't need anybody? He said, well, I don't know. He said, maybe somebody might have quit or somebody might have mm -hmm. died. I said, no, don't, don't need anybody. <laughs> Les Brown came back the fourth day. The man said, no, I don't need anybody. But then he said, can you drive? He said, yes. He hired Les to pick up entertainers coming into Miami and drive uh, and do, run errands, and Les said he didn't even have driver's license. <laughs> he said uh, Diana Ross and all of these people come, and he would pick them up at the airport. Didn't have a driver's license at first, but he kept practicing. Kept practicing. He said he ran errands for the disc jockeys. He said one Saturday, the disc jockey was there, and he had been drinking, and it became obvious in his slurred speech. Mm -hmm. He was drinking. Mm -hmm. so he said the station, and he and Les was at the station mm -hmm. with the disc jockey. He said the manager called the station and said, Les, uh, see if you can call some of the other disc jockeys to come in to finish his shift because he's not going to make it. Les said he waited a few minutes. Then he called the manager back and said, I, I couldn't didn't reach anybody. <laughs> he said, the manager said to him, do you know how to put the records on the turntable? He said, yes. He said, well, you put the records on. Don't say anything. Just put the records on and play out the rest of this guy's shift. Les said the guy kept on drinking. So Les said he then called all of his friends mm -hmm. and said, take your stereo and put it on the front porch. Because mm -hmm. Les Brown is fixing to come on the air. And he said, a few minutes later, the disc jockey fell out of his chair on the floor drunk. Les said he slid in the chair and he started talking that noise. But he could not have done that had he mm -hmm. not been prepared. Prepared for the opportunity. Of his popularity. Mm -hmm. So all of those years, he was preparing. What do you say before you put on James Brown's song that says, I feel good? Mm -hmm. What do you say to people before you put on Teddy Pendergrass's turn out the say to keep and so he said all of his friends turned on their took the stereo out on the porch and turned on the radio station but he was prepared mm -hmm. so uh he, he was persistent he mm -hmm. went back every day mm -hmm. and introduced himself all over 
When I first moved to Memphis, I was looking for a job for the telephone company. I said to the personnel manager, and this is in the day before cell phone, in the day before call waiting, I said to the personnel manager, I will be out looking for a job. So if you call me, I will not be at home. Okay. I will be calling you. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I call. The next week, Tuesday and Thursday, I call. I called on Monday. I said, I didn't know whether you'd call. No, I hadn't called you. I called back on Wednesday. No, I hadn't called you. Called back on Friday. No, I hadn't called you. Called back on Tuesday. No, I hadn't called you. I called back on Thursday. And the lady said, I just called your house. <laughs> he said, can you come in for a physical tomorrow? I went in on Friday for a physical and went to work on Monday because I was persistent. Mm -hmm. And so persistence pays off. And then I was prepared. So mm -hmm. what the last story does teaches us persistence, mm -hmm. but you have to be prepared and you need to prepare at an above average level. See, that's what makes you stand out and that's what captures your attention. Now, all of us probably have heard the George Washington Carver story. I believe that's who it was. The guy gave him an opportunity. He's going to teach him how to read or let him go to school or something if he would clean the room. I believe mm -hmm. it was Carver. And the guy took out a white handkerchief and reached up over something, and it was clean. Well, somebody taught him how to clean. Mm -hmm. So you never know, even what you think may be a mundane task, mm -hmm. they stand out. So this topic is it just it, it's just brilliant that you thought of this because preparation is crucial. And mm -hmm. often we make excuses. People in general make excuses, and the problem is. We were not prepared. That's it. We're not prepared. We're not prepared mentally. Mm -hmm. And we were not prepared physically, emotionally. Mm -hmm. When people get into relationships, they need to be mm -hmm. prepared emotionally. Mm -hmm. Because in, emo in, in emotional relationships, you don't always get your preference. Mm -hmm. so how do I respond when my preference is denied? See, children throw temper tantrum. Adults can't do that. Right. You prepare. So preparation is critical and crucial. Let me see if we have some questions now, or you may have some. I don't have any questions. Someone said they love that story. We start, you began to talk about Les Brown, um, but there's no questions. Any questions, anybody? We have a few watches on. No questions. Okay. Uh, pre pre making preparations brings into play vision, and that is being able to see, being able to see what the project is and what's going to be needed for the project. Mm -hmm. So when David prepared for the building of the temple, it's a magnificent structure. No temple has been built before. Mm -hmm. so he doesn't have a blueprint from someone else, just like Noah did not have a blueprint. Right. But when they built the tabernacle, they didn't have a blueprint from someone else. So we have to learn to become trailblazers. Mm -hmm. I used to tell my children, I said, there are two categories of people. There are people who follow the style, mm -hmm. and people who set the style. Right. If you follow the style, somebody else will always have done mm -hmm. it, you'd be walking behind. Mm -hmm. Set the style, you'll be out front and everybody will not understand it and some folk will laugh at it, mm -hmm. but then they will buy into it later when they see the value of what it is. So if you're going to set the style, you have to prepare to travel the road that other people don't understand. And people no doubt will make fun of it. They will not appreciate it. Mm -hmm. They cannot help you, but you have to develop the mental persistence mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Preparations are so crucial. My experience is people generally do exactly what they set their heart to do. Years ago, I was preaching in Atlanta and preached there a number of years, actually in Decatur. There was a young lady that moved down to Atlanta from New York and she did not have transportation. So we had a church bus and she, we'd pick her up for church. Well, 
we had two morning services, eight o'clock and 11. And the bus driver picked up people for Sunday school in time for Sunday school. She didn't want to get dressed early enough for Sunday school. She wanted the bus driver to come back and pick her up for 11. But there was just too much work. We couldn't do that. So she always kind of complained about that. And she couldn't get to church. Now, she lived approximately four miles from the church building. Mm -hmm. Did not get to church unless we picked it up. Well, she was a part of an organization in New York that was a performance group. And every so often, she would go back to New York to perform. Every now and then, I would get a call on Thursday that say, tell the bus driver, don't pick me up. I'm going to be in New York the weekend. We'll be performing. Now, the airport was 27 miles from her house. Mm -hmm. She could not get four miles to church. Right. She could get 27 miles to the airport and then serve 100 miles to New York. Mm -hmm. She never asked us to take her to the airport. She never asked us to take her to New York. So when her heart decided mm -hmm. to go to New York, her mind designed how to, way get to get there. Her heart had not designed to come to church. Mm -hmm. Had it been, then her mind would have designed how to get there. Now, people sometimes we fool ourselves, we lie to ourselves, we claim we really want to do it. Mm -hmm. we don't want to do it because there's very few things that the mind will not design when the heart has decided. So preparations are fundamental and foundational to everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus even told a story. He said, what man, before he set out to build a tower, he doesn't make sure that he has preparations. Or what soldier, before he goes to war, he makes sure that he has enough to win. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he will start building a tower. He will not have enough to finish it. And people will make fun mm -hmm. of this unfinished project. Mm -hmm. That's a preparation story. Mm -hmm. Did not mentally prepare mm -hmm. what it is that we were going to need. And, and here's the sad part of failing to prepare. You consume resources and hold them hostage in an unused posture. Wow. For example, uh, I've known people who decided they were going to fix their car. They went out and bought an engine, but they didn't get a transmission, and that car is sitting up on the blocks. I did that and when I was young. They, they got $1,500 in that car. That's just wasted resources. Yeah. And you're very careful. You may never fix that car. That's $1,500. That's See, time, man. energy, and labor that has gone to waste. That's true. You could have put that fifteen hundred dollars in the bank. You would have mm -hmm. gone in, you have taken a vacation or whatever. But that's failure to prepare. Preparations. Uh, here's a good thing for people to do. If there's unhappiness in your life, mm -hmm. there are irritations in your life. If there are failures, one of the first things you want to do is find out: Did this happen because I did not prepare? Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. Listen, if you fail the test, that's a preparation issue. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, you know, the teacher was mean. No, you did not prepare. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the teacher gave you the material. You could mm -hmm. have studied. Mm -hmm. You did not prepare. Right. Preparations. Preparations make life much more pleasant. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't prepare, I was talking to some people the other day and uh, a lady run out of gas. Uh, she was at a 20 minute walk because she had run out of gas. Mm -hmm. She didn't prepare. She didn't notice her gas hand, et cetera, et cetera. So, preparation is so crucial and critical. Yes, it is. All right. So, we're going to um, get ready to close it out. You want to tell everybody where your church is, what all you have going on at the Grace View? We are of the Grace View Church of Christ. There is another Grace View Church. I believe it's Grace View Baptist. 
People have ended up at our building looking for them. They have ended up at their building looking for us. As a matter of fact, wow. my son was in town a couple of weeks ago. He put it in his GPS and he ended up at the other Wow. And he thought, wow. So we're at 918-918 West Whitner Street. Mm-hmm. We are right not far from the downtown area. Mm-hmm. We meet on Sunday morning at 9.30 for Bible study. Our general assembly worship is 10.30. Uh, We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I post nurture nuggets every day of the week for the most part. We send out four or five times a week a meditation song that uplifts people. Matter of fact, I got a call a little while ago from a lady in Atlanta And she said that song, when you get it, it's just so uplifting for me. If you go on our website, graceview, www.graceview.xyz, graceview.xyz, not .com, XYZ, Mm -hmm. that's our website. And I'm in the process that I will be launching within the next 30 days, a blog. It's going to be called Spiritual Masculinity. Okay. We fit women, but we are targeting men and their responsibility. We're trying to build men up. Mm-hmm. And we're writing those blogs about spiritual masculinity. I'm also the author of 16 books. Okay. And those books will be on that website also. Uh, so in a, within the next 14 days, all of this information will be available. I provide life coaching on how to deal with life, life issues, relationships, or career coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am available for any and all speaking opportunities. And I am delighted that Myra has given me an opportunity tonight. And I want to say to all of you who are listening, whatever Myra needs, you give it to her. And keep her audience built up. Don't ever <laughs> let a week go by. <laughs> you do not invite one person at least to log in. As a matter of fact, right before the program comes on, just send a connecting link to someone. Mm -hmm. Keep doing good and keep talking good about people (laughs) who are doing good. Amen. You guys, we are thankful for um, teacher John Marshall joining us tonight. I took away a lot of nuggets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was um, a blessing preparation um, because we so need to be prepared. Um, So thank you again for coming on. We thank you all for tuning in tonight. Um, This is Myra Miller's Ascending Session. You guys have a blessed night. Thanks so much.